Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady and hopefully you watched yesterday's video featuring the North Carolina Botanical Gardens native plant sale and sculpture garden exhibit. And today I wanted to show you what I bought from that sale and kind of more about those plants and where I'm going to plant them. So let me turn the camera around and give you an up close view. Well, we'll start with the shade. And to be honest, I thought I had bought more for the shade, but I actually only got three things. So I'm really excited to get Lionia lucida. Um, this is a plant I actually used to grow and propagate at Camellia Forest. And it does really well. It has really cool flowers. It's related to blueberries. So it likes woodland swamps. So this is definitely gonna go into the woods. And this was a new one to me, Antenaria parlenii subspecies, hang on, phallix, there we go. And um, I've seen it before, I think it's really awesome, it's really beautiful, and it's definitely gonna do well in shade, I'm not even gonna consider that for full sun. And then my other shade plant is Polymonium reptans, and this is a beautiful plant that blooms in the spring with blue flowers. And um, well, again, I'm really excited to get these added to the woodland. Now my full sun selections, obviously there's a lot more. I was so, so excited to get some broadleaf evergreens. Uh, this is um, the Inkberry Ilex Glabra Shamrock. And though it does sometimes get kind of like a naked base, that's okay because it's going into those full sun borders that have all the perennials. So the perennials will kind of hide its naked legs. Uh, they had so many different Hypericums and I got overwhelmed, but I decided to get this one called the Sandhills St. John's Wort Hypericum Lloydii because I think it's gonna do really well in the sand. So I only bought one because I didn't want it to fail. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to growing it. I got three Vernonia. This is uh, the New York Ironweed Vernonia Nova Boreensis. And this gets really tall. You can do the chop on it midsummer and make it, you know, have better branching. And again, these are gonna go out into the full sun borders. Another one that was new to me that was blooming and I saw other people buying it and therefore I was like, well, I have to have it is the false bone set Brachelia eupatorioides variety eupatorioides that's a mouthful and again i have no experience growing this but i think it's really cool and i'm gonna put it out in full sun it says sun to part shade hopefully this like extreme sun will be okay one plant that i know will do well in this extreme sun is the agave virginica and um, this is one that I'm actually going to put into the Mangave Peninsula over there um, just to see how it does. And then I got Amsonia Tabernay Montana. I only got one because that was all they had left. Otherwise, I would have bought three. <laughs> I'm very excited to get this Hamamalis virginiana, the American Witch Hazel. This is not a cultivated variety. I'm sure it's seed grown. And um, it'll probably have fragrant, soft yellow flowers in the fall. Now, let's see, what else did I get? I scored some Salvia urticifolia, the nettle leaf sage. And you know, the other salvias I planted in the full sun look great. So I figured this would be a nice addition. I got this one that looks similar to a salvia, but it's not. It's Trichostema dichotumum, dichotumum, perhaps, forked blue curls. Um, again, never have grown it, but dry to average, sun to part shade. Hopefully it'll do well enough. And the one I'm probably most excited about, I featured in the video yesterday, and I was like, oh, I really wish this had seed. Well, I'd already bought it, so that's good. I'll have my own seed together. Costaleskia pentocarpus, and this is the white flowered form. So it also comes in pink, but I was really impressed with the white flowers. 
So I'm really stoked to have that. And again, I think this is a plant that I could do a hard cut back next year and it would have better branching and it wouldn't get as tall and leggy and lanky. But the thing I'm probably most, most, most excited about is scoring these longleaf pines. And, you know, I don't have any longleaf pines here, even though I'm sure there was a time when they would have been growing on these properties. And of course that is Pinus palustris. And uh, you see they get 80 to 100 feet. But this year, I'm actually gonna use these in containers for winter interest. So basically I'm gonna treat them like you would a Carex. And then next year I will get them planted into the ground. But for right now, these are gonna be container plants. I'm gonna do four in the pots near Dennis's bench. And then I'm gonna do one over by my front door. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these things planted right now. And I'm gonna get everything watered in because we don't have any rain in the forecast. And I'm also gonna go ahead and fertilize everything with cotton seed meal, mostly because I have it. That's generally step one. But also it's a good slow release natural form of nitrogen. And I have a lot of chlorosis in the native beds next door, I think because I didn't fertilize enough. So I'm hoping that this will sort of compensate, green everything up for the winter because, you know, you have to realize all those Carex are evergreen. So they're not gonna go deciduous and die to the ground. They're gonna be green all winter. I might as well actually make them green and at least try because they're very, very, uh, well, they're very yellow right now. And I, I have a feeling it's a combination of my not giving them enough food and also dry, growing them a bit too dry. And, and admittedly, they're in more sun than they probably wanna be. Now, I also wanted to say I was so inspired by last week's henna artist that I found these butterfly henna tattoos at the Botanic Garden yesterday and they're temporary and I, I just love it and I, I realized like I I made it so that it's like for me to look at and it's really funny at the Botanic Garden Flora and Sarah and I were talking about how we're like some of the only people we know that don't have any tattoos and you know we all kind of all have the same like well I don't know what I would get I don't really want to go through that kind of pain. I don't really know that tattoos age well, you know? And so I was like, oh, but we could have temporary tattoos and look like we're really cool. So uh, every time I see it, I'm reminded of the unfortunate weather of last week's open garden, but the fun and joy that we had uh, from everyone coming into the house and well, making the best of, of a very rainy, rainy situation. Well, I hope you'll stay tuned to watch where I get everything planted and um, well, you know, fall is for planting and October is a great month in general to plant. However, I do wanna just reiterate that the forecast is very, very dry. Um, so if you don't wanna be a dedicated waterer, you might wanna wait until maybe November when the temperatures are cooler and maybe we will have more consistent moisture but we're remarkably dry. Like we're as dry now as we were in the middle of July. So uh, don't let that skip your mind just because the days are getting short. The ground is, is actually very parched and to make sure that your plants will have the best success for overwintering, you don't really wanna let your ground get too dry at this season. And you can see the pink muley grass is starting to flower. You have to get in the right light to really notice it. And, you know, I think these beds are pretty well filled, but then I always find room for more plants. It's funny how that works. I love the dried seed heads on the spirea. That's spirea tomentosa. And the white muley, the white cloud is starting. And of course the asters are in full bloom and they look great. Let's see some garbage. Um, the shizicariums are looking wonderful. And you can really see the white cloud muley in here getting ready to start blooming. 
And I just think that the addition of the Rattlesnake Master was really critical. That broader texture makes a big difference. Now I planted a bunch of stuff over in here. So we've got that false bone set there. And then the salvias in here. And then that hypericum right on the edge. So I think this bed is, is looking good. Again, I fertilized those really chartreuse Carex luridas in hopes that they'll green up. And I think the bed's gonna continue to evolve, but look good, you know, considering it hasn't been planted a year. You know, we broke ground on this on January 15th. And a lot of the perennials didn't actually go in until uh, the middle of, or the end of May. And particularly in this bed, really all of the incredible color that you see, those were landscape plugs that got planted right around Memorial Day. So they've only been planted for the summer and they've really grown out super well. This bed is made of veggie mix from Soil Cube. And I really think that that has made a big difference in nutrient and moisture retention. The other bed was made of level mix and that's been harder to uh, keep watered. And it's definitely shown more nutrient deficiency. And I think because it's all sand, whereas this has nice organic matter compost. I did get the inkberry hollies planted along here, kind of in between deciduous hollies. So you can see that's right here. And I got the vernonia planted in and amongst the rudbeckia, uh, that big leaf rudbeckia his name right now is Maxima. <laughs> like it's escaping me. It means large. Rebecca Maxima. Um, and then the Colstowetskia, the white one, I planted there in and amongst the Solidago and Rebecca Triloba. So I think again, next year, in year two, everything's gonna keep bulking up. I think this bed's gonna be like fully planted um, but overall, I'm really pleased with how it's come out and it's been a really great learning experience and just overall a wonderful opportunity to be able to learn about new to me plants that are actually native to this region. And I'm very grateful to the North Carolina Botanical Garden for inspiring this incredible natives movement. And, you know, they walk the walk, they talk the talk. And that plant sale had so many amazing plants that they actually propagate. So it really is a unique opportunity to buy some relatively rare plants that aren't necessarily as easy to come by. Uh, plants that I certainly wasn't finding from wholesale growers. So I do hope that you will support the North Carolina Botanical Garden. They are a fantastic resource for anyone that's interested in conservation and growing native plants. Now that I've got everything planted, I'm gonna go ahead and fertilize both beds really well. I'm gonna use this entire bag. And basically, you know, you could spread cottonseed meal the same way you would any other organic fertilizer, just vigorously by the handful. Um, cottonseed meal is of course something that's uh, relatively local here in North Carolina since so much cotton is grown here. And I really want to green up these Carex because they're really, really yellow. Let me show you over here how chartreuse the Carex lurida are. So here in the east meets west border, these Carex lurida were planted with the intention of hiding the bare legs of the pycnanthemum. But you can see they're in, you know, full late day sun. They really don't appreciate this exposure or how dry it's been. So hopefully this will make a difference. Well, I probably could have used about three of these bags, but I did go ahead and hit all the most chlorotic areas. And I'm gonna take this opportunity to go ahead and water everything in, since like I said, there is no rain in our forecast. Well, I do hope that you will be inspired by this video and I hope you will check out the North Carolina Botanical Garden they have an amazing garden of all natives. 
They also have their sculpture exhibit running through December 1st. And go ahead and mark your calendars now. Their big native plant sale is always the last weekend of September. And members get to buy early on Friday night. And next year, you better believe I'm gonna be there for the member sale because there were so many plants that were sold out by Saturday. Well, everybody, 